You're cooking with hands. Guten Tag, my name is Acting Corporal Hans Müller, and this is Cooking with Hans. I will be discussing different types of recipes from field rations to field kitchen cooking to the type of rations soldiers would have had to deal with in any army from the Great War to World War II and the recipes that people would have to do, had to use in the time when food was being rationed. And these rations were very strict. In fact, if you were caught wasting food, you would have been fined. In fact, they had people inspecting your trash during that time. And I'm not talking about your standard MREs. These rations here are for the modern day soldier. I'm talking about vegetables, bread, fruit, beer, wine. Not only that, you would have had to preserve foods for long winters, during uh, times when there was no harvest, the, the fields were bare, during the winter times, you would have had to pickle your food. Olives. This is basically the way people in the 1940s and in the past had to preserve the food. Fermented grapes makes wine. Fermented rice makes sake. Fermented corn makes whiskey, grains, beers. For those who are thinking about going into reenactments, learn about the history and the foods you would have had to eat, or have, or find, knowing what kind of herbs, spices weren't always available in stores. People grew them. They had the gardens. They get them from one person from the other. Take canned foods. This is what I was actually able to scavenge. Canned corned beef. They canned foods for a long time. But a lot of this stuff didn't come out until after World War II. Take instant coffee. Was developed for the soldiers of World War II. What did people eat? You had to have things like meats, sardines as well, beans and bacon, pork and beans fish canned tunas and canned milk for your coffee, tea some of these things get dripping 
you're going to use ham knees, devil ham. In German ration books, you had American as well, you had meat and vegetables. Vegetable beef soup, just as is. These are already pre-cooked. All you're doing, doing is warming them up. In fact, to this very day, one recipe that is still being uh, made, canned, and sold in stores was that of canned spaghetti. Even by the guy who supplied the U.S. forces in World War II. Chef Boyardee. He actually supplied millions of canned spaghetti to World War II. He even changed his name, the spelling of his name, so people would pronounce it right. He got an award from the U.S. government. Plus, bouillon cubes. These type of things would have been put in the C rations, K rations. You drop it into a bowl of hot water, a cup of hot water, with some maybe uh, potatoes or some type of vegetable. You got your brief proteins. Every soldier had to eat a certain amount of calories because they were burning a lot. Germany enjoyed something as well as we did. Coca-Cola. They did. They actually had their own Coca-Cola plant in 1930 Germany. But when war broke out, no more ingredients for Coca-Cola. They developed their own sodas using things like beet sugar. And that item was Fanta, Fanta, Fanta. Fanta Cola. Different type of bottle, but still the same. The recipe was sold later to the Italians, then to Mexico, and now that's where it's being made, in Mexico, to other states as well. Okay. Oh. So. In a minute here, we're going to start talking about the mess, the mess kits of World War II that both the Americans and the Germans used. So let's talk about mess kits and the different type of containers used by many of the armed forces. This here is a five liter water container. Right here you can see where it says Trinkwasser 5L. This is a German water container. Trinkwasser means drinking water. A5, this is a German's canteen with a small cup. Easy to detach from these uh, straps. Unscrew it the top, pour yourself a drink or drink from the can canteen. They attach to this uh, little item right here, your bread bag. It would attach like right here and you're ready to go. So if you're a guy who likes modeling, uh, that's where it goes on your uh, model. But here's uh, different, something different that the Americans didn't use. They had uh, forks and spoons. Your fork and spoon, one piece. They would be used for your mess tit, 
and you missed it, which is this right here. But it wouldn't fit inside this. That's why it goes in your bread bag. And it wouldn't claim. Unlike the Americans mess kit. They would have a knife and a spoon and fork, not a knife. They didn't have those in there. In this. You hear that? This is why U.S. forces did not carry mess kits with them. They didn't. These were carried by the kitchen staff. The kitchen or the crews and stuff, they brought them. And they kept, you helped keep them clean, but they were responsible. You notice it's in two pieces. Here's the thing about these. Put them like this. Boom. This is how you eat from it. Very easy. But also, one thing is, a cup comes with this canteen right there. It would be secured inside a pouch for your canteen, in your canteen pouch. This item right here is for bread. It is a aluminum bread tin, German. They would have breads in this, most likely to help keep it warm. And also, this little item right here is for fat. Either butter, lard, whatever you would be using to cook in this. But also, this tin can also be attached to your bread bag. Oh, and uh, let's just say I almost forgot something very important. Your German word for the day. Guten Tag, which means good afternoon or good day. Either way, you're correct. That is Guten Tag. So, please like and subscribe to this channel. Hit that little bell icon. I have a group on Facebook called Cooking with Hans, as well on, as on Twitter, Cooking with Hans, spelt the same way, K-O-C-H-E-N, Cooking. That's cooking in German. Auf Wiedersehen.